So thinking back on my own experience of, of living with a medical student and going through the set of financial concerns that, that really resonated when I went back to think about what I could help you with, the fourth year in transitions, you know, nobody generally talks about when you're taking out your student loans and doing your entrance counseling, what the special expenses of finishing medical school are going to be. And, you know, I'm not talking about a graduation party or a trip to Cancun here, but you may end up matching at a residency program that is on the other side of the country from where you're finishing medical school. You're going to need some money for that plane ticket, for that moving van, for first and last on a new home. So the transition expense planning, that's got to be in your mind as you go through your last semesters, when you're taking out the last of your student loans, or if you're on a grant or a work study, whatever it may be, as your resources start to get spent down in that last mile, you may need as much as another $15,000, you know, deposits on apartments, $2,000 to $5,000, hiring a moving service if you own some furnishings, a couple thousand dollars. If you have to buy new furnishings because you don't own those things yet, or you've been living at home during medical school, that could be another couple thousand dollars. Your first paycheck in residency is not going to come July 1st when you start. Your first paycheck in residency is going to come two to three weeks later. You might even not be part a participant in the first pay period. So how to address this, how to deal with it, got to keep these things in mind when we're budgeting. For you as med students, the lesson here would be don't spend every last dollar of your last loan disbursement. Keep some money in reserve so that you can afford to get to your residency program. So you need to make sure that you've got cash or you've got a plan for using credit cards responsibly to take care of those expenses. I know that the financial pressures of board exams can be weighty, you know, there is no extra student loan money that's granted because you're going to have to pay $900 for your exam fee and a couple of hundred dollars for a hotel. And if you want to do a board study course or buy QBanks, that could be another thousand or 2000 or 3000. You've got a plan for it. You've got to make sure you're setting aside money. Um, finishing residency will be another transition, right? Some of you may be matching to fellowship after your residency. You may have to move across the country again. We could be talking about the same types of costs. Some of you may finish your residency or fellowship, and you may want to move back to home, come back to where you grew up to practice. That could be licensing in a new state. Again, travel and relocation costs. One of the questions that we got a few years ago giving this talk that, that we've gone back to time and time again, this came from, from a young man who was completing his, his medical school. And he, he said, you know, I have very little experience managing real world finances. I'm a 28-year-old man child, his words who has been in school his whole life and I'm really nervous and confused about making a financial plan for after school. That level of anxiety is common. If you're feeling similar, you're not feeling wrong. The way our society and our financial system is set up, if you've been in school direct from high school to undergrad to medical school, where else would you have learned these things? The process of ch changing those feelings and getting past those feelings is to engage them, deal with them, start finding resources, use the AMC resources, continue whatever path brought you to the resources that we're offering here. You know, ben, make sure you you're again. seeking out that was very helpful. To offer and I think that with there that, are people it out wraps there up this clip on medical money matters who want to help you get through these transitions and these process. But more yeah, information thank you again. is going to be the start of that journey. So thank you again. That was very finding helpful. Finding counselors, finding and I think people that you can with ask that, advice it from. Wraps up this I sit with clients every day reminding them to go ask minute. their parents. What do their if parents you're think about these things? If you're watching, questions, please If you have people out. who you know love you, who you know will give you unvarnished advice in their best interest, that's a resource you should not neglect. But start this process of going from the world didn't offer me any information about how to handle my finances to feeling comfortable and confident about how to handle your finances, start that process by seeking out resources and asking advice. You just that take the first step. The world's going to meet you halfway with that. Everybody wants you to succeed. Seth, thank you again. That was so helpful. And I think that with that, it wraps up this clip on Medical Money Matters in a Minute. If you're watching and have questions, please reach out.